morning, Peter. Morning, Peter. How are you? Your microphone is muted. You'll normally be muted as soon as you join the stream, so you can unmute that and you can have a chat to us. How are you this morning? Oh, still muted, mate. There we go. There we go. Hey, there Pete. Go. I'm good. I'm good. Oh, how are you? Yeah, good, mate. Yep, yep, we've gone full. I've skipped being a father and gone straight to being a grandfather. I've got Frenchies for historicals. So, got walk socks and sandals in the post. Um, <laughs> great. No, these are 28s. We've gone oh, proper see? sadist. Soft. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. So, Peter's. Peter's uh, sorry, just tuned out for a half a second then. Peter's joined us from. Um, Demented games to hang out and have a bit of chat. Are you gonna? Are you painting anything, Peter? Are you gonna be doing anything with us? Or no, no, like I'm sitting on a computer at the moment. My paint just just over there, right out of reach. Just Look, there, I'll, I'll I'll throw up real quick. Uh, I was just telling Ed before the stream. This is this is this is my situation at the moment. So, <laughs> I, over there is my painting desk where my light, all my paints are, all my tools. And right now, I'm having to paint, you know, right here so I can control all of this. Uh, uh, um. <laughs> Yeah, I, I could make a little painting station in front of my computer here if I felt keen. Yeah. Uh, but, you know. So, have you been, have you been painting anything? No. Um, yeah. Um, hang on, let's wheel over here. Currently working on some. Um, probably just about see this one that's on the webcam there. Some old school. Hey, puppy stuff. dog. So, some of the um, some of the old Rackham Celts I'm working on at the moment, and some a whole bunch of World War Two models. Hey, doggy. Oh, there she is. Hi, puppy. This is Poppy. She's just coming to say hi. You okay, darling? She's only nine months old, so she's a little one. Viv saw her when she was probably two thirds of the size. <laughs> she's gorgeous. Yeah, uh, just a, a bunch of um, bunch of old old rack of minis at the moment, and yeah, World War Two is my painting at the moment. So. Oh, good, good. I wanted to have a chat to you. Um, I don't. I, did, did you want to have a chat um about your project, Peter? Yeah. Well, why uh, not? Are we are we able to talk about it? Because I know that um, you know things are still in general terms. Yeah, it's 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 like it's like still in development. So it's it's a little while off yet. I'm happy to have a general chat about it. Why not? Yeah, because um, you know when uh, when I was talking with Ara from Manor Press, he's coming on the show a little bit later on. He'd mentioned to me that you were working on a World War Two project. Um, I am indeed. Yes. A, and a, it's a it's a small small scale World War Two skirmish game. At the moment. So. Um, Looking at it, sort of um, ten man squads, and that's it. The force. So it's, it's a squad. It's a squad based game. Yeah, squad, squad based. Think of think of um, kind of Necromunda, but World War Two. Yeah. Um, so um, kind of. Yes, we, we can get into it, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> a, lot, a lot more detail than most games of its type have so you've got things like ammo tracking and that sort of guff and all the, all the, all the crunchiness that we all love well I love anyway yeah um, I think um, at that level I think you know getting into some of that granularity is nice especially if it helps bring you closer to the characters yeah exactly yeah yeah um, and there'll be, there'll be, there'll be you know, uh, uh, some sort of leveling up mechanic involved for people gaining skills and getting better at, at fighting and um, yeah, sort of the squads will be loosely historically based to begin with, so you, you start off with more or less a British section print. Um, but you can add whatever you want to it as time goes on. You, know, you can chuck a paratrooper in there because you feel like it. You know, hire a couple of um, partisans to help you out, sort of stuff. Uh, be lots of fun. So, is it, would it be, would it be more, you know, campaign and narrative orientated rather than you yeah, know, absolutely, absolutely, you, yeah. Let's play a hundred points aside. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's it, there is a. A, you know, a, a, a points equivalency sort of mechanic I'm working on, so so you can actually match match play if you wanted to. Um, you can actually just pick up this place to pick up. Game doesn't have to be played as a narrative game. You can just pick a force and fight with it. You know, um, it'd be interesting to see how it goes. I think it'd be a nice little. It's a, it's a sort of game I want to play. So um, as I say, the intro to the game, it's the kind of war game Clint Eastwood would star in. Uh, <laughs> sure. Nice. And hopefully Richard Burton as well. Yeah, well, hopefully Richard Burton. Yeah, that'd be good. Okay. Um, I remember you telling me about this one, Pete, and, and all I thought of was we're basically going to make, um, you know, 
an RPG for for World War Two, which is kind of fantastic. Like RPG yeah. light with squads, exactly. which just sounds yeah. a lot of fun. I was just thinking that you know, there's all these players out there that play things like Bolt Action and stuff like that. They've got thousands of minis, and you know, uh, it might be nice for them to have something else they can do with their models. You know? uh, what uh, what sort of scale, Pete? Twenty eight mil. Twenty eight. Okay. Yeah, twenty eight mil. Yeah. I'm using the ones I'm painting up for it uh, are from Artisan and Eureka mostly at the moment. Are you, are you a metal fan, Peter, or are you plastic for your World yes. War Two stuff? Well, metal. Yeah. Metal. Mostly because the, the plastic stuff tends to be produced by guys like Warlord, things like that, who have real sets already, uh, and therefore are uh, reticent to let you use photographs of any models in their books, in your book. Yeah, right. So people like Artisan, um, those guys, Eureka, don't have real sets engaged with their models, so they'll let you use whatever you want, essentially. They're quite happy for it. Sure. Also, there's a nice little German range called Stussy's Heroes who are letting me use their stuff. They're great models. Um, little, they actually, they actually are character models of, of World War Two characters. So there's specific soldiers of his of a historical, uh, uh, historical personalities. Yeah, I've got, I've got um, his name, um, Mad Jack Churchill. <laughs> I got a figure. Awesome, Love Mad yeah. Jack. Absolute um, nutter. Shot but, someone with a bow. Like, who does that? <laughs> Mad Jack does. That's who. What a nut. His own personal piper. Yeah. <laughs> he, he does he, has he got a claymore? Has he got his claymore? Yep, good. There's yep. no his bow, sadly, on the figure. So I might have to get a bow for him. <laughs> uh, they also do a really Only nice... one to... Sorry, Pete. Here yeah, you go, mate. They also do a really nice Colonel Clink and Sergeant Schultz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, that was my favourite show when I was younger. Oh, yeah. yeah. With your system, are you going to potentially look at do, doing almost um, NPC enemies? So you could command a squad and, um, you yeah, know, maybe... Guards, you mean? Yeah, so like yeah. have a couple of friends to almost do co-op. You know, you'll take off maybe three figures of the squad and I'll take sort of four over here or something and then... Yeah, it, it's something I've been playing around in my, within my head is, is, is how to do missions against unaware guards. Mm. Um, which will be I've yet to work exactly how it's going to work it's its one of those things that when I write rules I tend to let them boil around for a month or so in my head yep. <laughs> I usually think of it when I'm you know, on the bog or in the shower or something oh that's the idea that'll do it <laughs> <laughs> um, it was the same when I was when I was working out with this how to do um, nationalities and stuff I was, I was toying around for ages with um, the idea of of, of, of making the starting squad for each nationality an actual legal, you know, historical section. So that the British guys would always have start up with one one Sten gunner, one Breton gunner, and a bunch of riflemen. Uh, I might just just quickly jump in, Peter. There's been a couple of comments here that saying uh, Peter's audio is very very quiet. Um, I'll try it, to move it, that in there a little bit more. Is that better? Let's hope so. Yeah, it's better. Yep, yeah, cool. The microphone a bit far from me, gob. Um, yeah, the um, we would yeah, be looking at you know at, 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 at whether to make the squads historical to start with, and then I kind of abandoned that idea. I went, you know what? It, it, it's better just to let people build what they like. A lot of people will th you'll choose to build historical anyway because it's more fun to start that way. But if you want to build a squad with all Bren guns, um, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, um, you know, being 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 able to create that sort of slightly more fantastical or you know whimsical you know squad yeah. your your hollywood crew yeah I, I, I would debate the effectiveness of taking all bring guns seems, <laughs> like seems like a good idea but um yeah that i'm the weapons are interesting I'm, I'm i'm looking at i'm building a lot of um uh, almost character into the guns as it were so um uh for instance a a Sten gun versus an MP40. Um, so we get a copy of the rules here. So the Sten gun's better, closer up than the MP40 is, um, but the MP40 is a bit better at long range. So kind of having that basic difference in a, in a submachine gun, and you know, to a point, and and allowing characters as they progress to pinch weapons off one another. So if you take a German out and he's got an MP40, your character can grab his MP40 if you want. I was, I was just about to um, say that, you know, as I was reading through the, 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 the rules, you know, I noticed yeah. that you could collect things off the battlefield or, you know, pinch yeah. things from people. Yeah, as, as, you, as you progress, you can just nick stuff and gather things as, as you, you know, you take an enemy out and, and you know, get up to him and take his stuff, which is which is all cool. <laughs> have, have we? I would definitely request um, 
the inclusion of a, a baseball bat because I'm already complaining out my glorious <laughs> bastards. Uh, yes. Yeah, well, yeah, the, so the, the way you <laughs> work is, is that you'll have a, a, a list for your force. So your British force has a certain list of equipment they can get. Um, the Germans have a different one. Russians, again, different one. But there'll be some general kit. Like, you know, landmines, for instance, and landmines. I'm not really going to go into the difference between a British landmine and a German landmine because there probably practically is none, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, things like knives, knives and knife, you know. Um, so the, I, I'm kind of picking key guns out of each range. So, for instance, for the for the British revolver, the British pistols, they've got the Webley revolver, which is you have to have uh, the Browning and the well rod, and that's it for the pistols. So... There were about seven or eight pistols the British used, but those three are the three sort of that have a difference. They have some differences between them. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the, you know, the Webley's a revolver, the Browning's an automatic, and the well rod silenced. So well, why wouldn't you silent the gun? Hey, cool. Hey, uh, Peter, have we mentioned the name of this game yet? I haven't mentioned it because I'm not sure how you know far. Uh, or... it's, it's not actually final yet. Um, it's 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 current sort of working name is, is Thousand Yard Stare. So we, we could call that the project title. Yeah, call that project title for the moment. Um, so it's like it's it's, it's like it's a few months off completion yet in, in its first draft form. They've got to do all the playtesting. So it's, there's lots to go yet. Um, it's got it's kind of frustrating. Um, you know, when I was talking to Ara, uh, you know, as I said, Ara's from Manor Press. For those watching at home, he'll be popping on the stream later today. Um, we were we were talking about uh, Peter's game. And yep. for, for those of you who've just tuned in or are wondering why my graphic currently has the Demented Games and the Twisted logo on it, because we're chatting to Peter Overton from uh, Demented Games um, about, uh, at the moment, his new game uh, with the working project uh, title of Thousand Yard Stairs. When I was talking to Ara about it, um, you know, I immediately was, you know, attracted to it simply from the whole Hollywood perspective. Your, your, your intro, your intro there, uh, you know, in that, uh, in that copy that I got was, you know, it was, it was enough for me. I said to Ara, you know, I've read the first page and, you know, I'm into it. I can't wait to, you know, start, I can't wait to start running around with some guys. Um, yeah, it, it'll be interesting. And, and the reason it's called that name, um, is that it will have, um, elements of battle fatigue in it as the, as, as part of the campaign. So, well, I haven't worked out exactly how it's going to work yet, but one of the things I'm, I'm trying to try and do is have players make a decision that to not to always run their best troops. So you don't always send, you know, Corporal Carver out there because he's awesome, because eventually you'll wear him out, um, regardless of how, you know, whether he survives every battle or not. Eventually he'll just get tired and won't want to fight anymore, you know. Um, so it's, it's giving you that kind of meta choice of, 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 of managing your troops before the game even. Uh, which will be fun. Um, all sorts of interesting bits and pieces, and and and, and during the game, interesting sort of um, mechanics to do with, with 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 their mental state in the game as well. So I'm really trying to build in, you know, that kind of crunchiness to the to the game with some interesting sort of not just you know fighting okay and then running away. You know, these whole states have gone to ground and panicked and all sorts of things like that. So they're now, the guys are real people. They don't like being shot at particularly. Um, i just quickly jump into the chat for a quick second. Somebody pointed out that my vape is going right into the mic. Sorry, I thought I muted my mic, um, but I forgot I've got two mute buttons, one for um, the stream and one for us here on Google Hangouts. I'm sorry about me vaping right into my microphone. And some people are saying, Pete's still very quiet. I've tried to turn that up a little bit, so let me know if the audio is better. Um that Which there. it's uh, it, uh, it's not it's not you, Pete. It might be my um, settings here on my end. Okay. So cool. um, Mike Parker, um, who will be joining us a little bit later on, um, is saying the audio is better. Sorry, Pete. Yeah. All right, no worries. Yeah. What are we all, Al- what are we all painting? On? I was just about to say, Albie, uh, Albie Hughes uh, says, Peter, the idea sounds awesome. By the way, not all knives are the same. Not oh, true. Yeah. Now a cookery, that's a yeah. knife. Yeah. Ooh, yes, yes. Well, that, that isn't. That, that, that's a thing. Yeah, that's that's a weapon where you would probably pick a cookery out as a special knife because it's it is so different to the other knife. But you're not going to necessarily say a uh, you know uh, the, the American K bar is much different to a you know Fairburn Sykes knife. They're kind of the same thing, you know. They're, they're stabby and and they do have. I'm sure they're different. There is a difference in them as much as there's a difference in you know. 
a whole bunch of submachine guns, but you don't pick all of them because you just simply can't. It's, yeah. The difference is uh, uh, preference and, and small corner case usages, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah, you'll end up with, you know, table after table after table of, you know, you know <laughs> equipment and abilities. Yeah, well, it's like the, 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 the part of, I was, when I was look, doing some research on the thing, the, the Germans are sport for choice in submachine guns. They've mm. got so many of them um, that they used in the war. Um, and you've got to just kind of select two or three, uh, to my mind, in, on the grounds that most of the ones they used were probably remarkably similar. They are better in, you know, build or durability or slight accuracy changes that were slightly better or rate of fire was a bit better or what a bit less prone to jamming but you know we're not going to try and reflect that in the game you just got to go well these are the ones they use mostly we'll go with those and they're the ones that have a bit of a major difference yeah yeah so, um, um gray beard wargaming says hey peter if you are yep. going to have battle fatigue can yep. you have spike milligan as a named character <laughs> <laughs> Are, is, are they are they are they going to be named characters in the in the in the game? Are, are you are, are we are you able to do that or are, you know? Yeah, is, yeah, yeah, it would just be a matter of, of defining the stats of a of a of a particular famous soldier and say this is the dude. You know, this is how, I, how the game reads this gentleman's characteristics. Right. Um, the problem with doing it, I guess, is that you're trying to reflect a, possibly a real person. Yeah, uh, well, that's what that's what I was that's what I was leading to yeah. from 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 a from a permission perspective or from a from well, a, yeah, you know, that's, that's the problem is, is you go around saying that you know uh, this guy's a horrible coward and runs away all the time, then it's probably not nice for his you know, relatives and family. But um, <laughs> and I, I would probably lean towards if people want you know giving people a mechanic to do that themselves. You know, if, if you want to do you know a name character, off you go, make it up. I'm not going to stop you. You know. Um, I would possibly include a few, um, may, maybe not even you know real real ones like do Schultz and do you know um, uh, Colonel Clink because it'd be fun. You know who wouldn't like to run Colonel Clink? Yeah, sure. Or, or Lieutenant Gruber. You uh, know. <laughs> like, like I said earlier, my fa my favourite show when I was younger. I used to come home from school. Um, you know, I'd eat a, a liter of uh, yogurt and sit down mm. and that, and watch Hogan's Heroes. They'd have two episodes back to back. I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd watch those two episodes, eat my yogurt, and then go off to rock climb for a couple of hours. Yeah, um, I, I, uh, I, I saw that one of the Dad's Army sets the other day and thought, oh, well, there's an idea. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was my introduction to World War Two. That and um, hello, hello. Yes, hello, hello. <laughs> Um, okay, so people are saying that the sound is much better. I had uh, it was my output settings here. Um, I had everything set up last night. Um, Pete, I, I accidentally deleted my stream setup at ten thirty last night. Uh, I saw that. Um, so I, I had to rebuild it quickly. Great, and Charlie. I, I just, you know, I lost all the testing that I did during the week. So the sound that people are hearing on YouTube is a sound that's coming out of my headphones. Yeah. Um, and. There's two different volume levels for that. So Peter, people are saying that Peter's sound is much better. Yeah, um, uh, that's wonderful. Uh, so uh, Mike says, um, I might have missed this. Is the idea that there will be adventure modules like a traditional RPG? Not so much. Not so much. It's, it's more, think, of it more, think of it more like more like Mordheim you know, and, and Necromunda, that sort of thing. So a game that will have some defined missions if you want to play them and ways to generate more missions. Um, like, like Twisted has. Twisted has the... The, the option to build something about 2,000 different missions in wow. the end. You know, um, just out of the options that are in the book. Like there's, there's, there's 20 deployments, there are 20 or 30 missions, and there are a whole bunch of submissions. So um, this would be very similar in that I'll give you lots of options to, to basically bolt together to make a new mission up um, that, that you guys are fighting over. Um, just just for those that don't know, Twisted is a steampunk 28 millimeter um, skirmish game that, that Peter and Sebastian Archer put together, and it's absolutely fantastic. It's um, how would you describe it, Peter? It's basically like a RPG light. It's really interesting. Yeah, very much like that. It's concept. always been. It was always designed with with narrative in mind rather than anything much else. Um, it, it, it it's not as much <laughs> RPG light. There's not no, there's no sort of character development in it to speak of, but. It it really focused on the on the character on on the, on the models themselves and and the interplay between them rather than basically trying to win the game. I I, I lose as twisted as often as I win, and losing is just as much fun as long as you win. Something spectacular happens that you can laugh about. <laughs> <laughs> so it's always been my way with gaming. I've always 
I've always preferred a skirmish game for that very reason. I think the most fun I had with that one was when I set up. Um, oh, I've got the names of all the characters, but um, the um, who were the kids? The the oh, the Urkin. The Urkin. So I had. Yeah. I think how many did I have, Nick? I, I lined up about eight or nine Urkin, and then chained the uh, the lightning pistol across all oh, of yes, them right. between your characters. <laughs> I lost a lot more troops than you did, but geez, we laughed about it. It was it was very funny. That's magnificent. Yeah. yeah, and and Nick's like, I know what you're doing, and I'm not going to stop you. Just yeah. move these ones up here, and we'll see how big we can make the lightning chain. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I actually mentioned specifically in, in in the rules a few times in Twisted, and again in in, in Thousand Yards there that the rules are there for you to for to have fun with. You know, don't mm -hmm. don't don't stop doing stuff that's awesome in the game just because the rules say you probably shouldn't. Um, I get fairly specific about it in Thousand Yards there, where I say that give an example of a of a American trooper on the roof of a church. He wants to swing down, smash through the church window, and land inside, and start machine gunning people. Technically, in the rules, you can't do that um, because it would be a, more actions you could actually probably take. But it sounds so awesome that you know I give you a guideline how you might choose to do it. You know, you might handle that particular mechanic in the game because it's the kind of thing I, I, I'm taking what I what I what I did from developing Twisted and, and building on it a bit more and making a bit more of the of the, of the character stuff. Um, that sort of thing's always been fun. That's why I like Rogue Trader much more than 40k. Um, Rogue Trader had that sort of slight bit of character to it that 40k lost. Yeah, I think you, you, you can get more involved in the actual playing of the game and, yeah, and enjoying a fun experience yeah. rather than, you know, helping to, you know, curate a rules manual. Actually, uh, yeah. it says on page 27 that uh, you can't do that. Um, yeah, exactly. And but once it got to the point where... Yeah, someone got shot and you took a handful of soldiers off, and that's no fun at all, you know, for my mind. I've never enjoyed that sort of thing. Yeah. You know, I think um, I think a, a big part of that is who you play with as well. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, it, it, being able to the, play the, a game like that is amazing. Yeah. The, the, um, the games that I like are very much for people like me who like odd games. Um, um, so, <laughs> odd people who like odd games. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I think if I, wrote, if I wrote games everyone wanted to play, then I'd be the same as you know, Games Workshop. All the other games. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Who wants to do that? I, I, I want to write games for me, you know. Uh, 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 games I like to play. I know. Uh, well, that's, that's, that, that makes it much easier to, when you, to, to, to enjoy what you're doing and make the game good. You know, obviously, if you're trying to design a game from a commercial perspective just for the reason of being a commercial project, you know, yeah. it's going gonna, it's gonna to feel dry and, and you know, the game's going to play dry. And, exactly, yeah. Um, you're getting, you're getting your, your, your design of a game driven by a salesman. It's no fun at all. Yeah. Um, you've, got to, you've got to kind of design a game and hope, I think, is my theory. Um, I mean, Twisted's been good. Twisted is getting a good response now. We're getting some good growth in the UK, which is nice. Yep. Um, it seems to be where it's taken a foothold. It, it started to take off in the States just before COVID, uh, and then died again, which is a bit sad. Um, but certainly in the UK now, we've got a, a distributor set up over there for Twisted, and it's doing really quite nicely. So for, for, for our UK viewers at the moment, um, Peter, do you know where they can get that? Or uh... Uh, Yeah, the, the Outpost in the UK stock it. Well, they're our main distributor over there. Yep. Uh, also through the WAMP store, they have it as well. Um, so there's plenty of places you can get hold of it in the UK. The Outpost have probably got other shops as well, but they haven't really told us which ones they are. So, um, But we're also looking to you know, make some other changes to the way things are done with the game to try and make it more friendly for the UK customers to get hold of it. Yeah, well, that's uh, that's always one of the big challenges for us here in, in Australia is, you know, the logistics well, of getting moment. our stuff out. Oh, yeah, especially at the moment, of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Shipping, uh, shipping costs have gone through the roof, which is crazy. Um, but, you know, you got to you got to deal, you got to support people, you got to support players. Get, that means sending stuff to the UK at a slightly higher price than so be it, you know. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's been an interesting ride, Twisted. I mean, it's been really good. Um, it's, it's got to a good place now. There's some interesting stuff coming for it. Some new models we're working on at the moment. Um, uh, some really quite fun stuff. Um, we've got a shopping schedule built up for this year. So towards you know early next year, we'll start having modules, modules coming in almost every month. For wow. So, um, from a new project, there's no miniatures that we'll be developing to speak of that I'm aware of at the minute. I've spoken briefly to Nick about doing a few things at Eureka. Uh, he's, but we haven't bolted anything firmly down or worked on anything specific. So um, 
basically rely on the Rangers. There's enough will between when he's out there without me adding to the, to the you know, bloated mess. Um, well, you know, it, it sounds like from a, from a few people here in the chat, there's some character miniatures that should be done. Well, exactly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's just a matter of, of whether you can make them and sell enough of them, given the cost of making a good model. You know, I don't, I'm not about making half ass models. You know, I don't want to do that. Um, yeah, and if, you've, if anyone's seen the Twisted models, they'll know exactly <laughs> what Pete's talking about. The level yeah. of quality is incredible. Yeah, well, all that stuff for, for Twisted is hand sculpted, so it's none of it's 3D sculpted. Um, that's all done. That, the absolutely gorgeous figures. Gorgeous yeah, no, figures. No, um, and we try and keep the, the casting up as high as we can as well. I mean, Nick at, at Eureka is the, one of the best metal casters in the world, I would venture to suggest. Um, the, the resins are done by a gentleman up in, uh, in Queensland, and they are also awesome. Um, they're some of the finest resin miniatures I've ever seen, and I've seen quite a few. Um, he even goes to the extent of, of there's a couple of models where we've got quite fine barrels on guns. And, uh, uh, and he, 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 when he casts them, God knows how he does it, he gets wire in the metal. So there's actually a metal wire running in the middle of the gun barrel. Oh, wow. So that it won't snap because it can't. It's got metal. It's it's it. got a like a metal structure, a skeleton. It's, a, it's like a pre-pinned sort of bit of resin, you know, which is incredible. That's incredible. Uh, yeah, that makes a lot more sense. I was wondering how they 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 would arrive and like you know none of them were bent. Yeah. Other, as opposed to other things I've had where you just got this noodle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the, the resin it uses is this incredible. It, it it's remarkably flexible, uh, but also remarkably detailed. So that. They, they're quite resilient, you know. Um, there's a model we have called Indigo Ford, one of the, one of the science, the Egyptian group. She's got these massive big whip sort of loops around her in a huge circle. I was terrified of that in resin. Um, um, well, it's going to snap every five seconds. But the ones he does, you can just really squash the whip and it doesn't snap. But it doesn't deform either in, you know, in, in most circumstances. So it's amazing stuff, whatever, whatever the resin he uses is. Um, so, yeah, it's one of those things. It's one of the reasons I didn't like resins initially for, for gaming models. They're just not tough enough for my mind. But, no. Yeah. Um, these ones are pretty good. Yeah, the resins are excellent. Metals are my preference. It always has been. Yeah, I've, all, I've all, always been a, a, a metal person. Always been I like, I like plastic kits, um, but only only for their convertibility, which is one of the things that Games Workshop aren't doing particularly well at the moment, I don't think, for my money anyway. Is that they make these no, like, they've gone away from um, awesome, that awesome real. Plastic, yeah, awesome plastic kits, but you can't build them any other way. But the way they're meant to be built, you know, it's like oh. the the basic troops. You can still do it, Pete. Yeah. But I've found yeah. like they've come out with more awesome poses than ever for their yeah. characters. But it's a lot more difficult to change that. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I totally agree, and that's that's definitely a bit of a detractor when you've it's just the same character a hundred times across all the armies. You know. <laughs> Yeah. Um, they are awesome. Don't be wrong. They're great. They're great. Music. It, uh, the quality has gone through the roof in the last five years for them. It's really yeah. impressive. Some of the latest stuff I've seen is, is quite remarkable. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, I actually really like those. Is that new one they just released last week? The new Necromunda chap and his offsider. Seen that one? Um, I did not see that one. It's like a. Uh, uh, I wonder if it's a nobleman, Nick Cameron, a nobleman, and he's all sort of bodyguard. Oh, yeah, yeah, I saw that one. That's really cool. Oh, Killing yeah. Scabs, is it? Or... No, um... Tell Jericho? No? I haven't, I, haven't seen, I haven't been keeping up. Yeah, it's this, this guy in sort of... Uh, kind of, you know, nobleman uniform uh, suit with this one yep. leg. Um, I light. think he's a Forge World release. Yeah, I think he might be a Forge World one. And there's this sort of martial-looking chick who looks like he's... Uh, liveried servant with a big shotgun very very really cool I don't know their name there but they're, they're nice it's one thing I, I, I don't much like about the, the games workshop release schedule at the moment is how they promote stuff at least like it was in white dwarf and you can look it up oh yeah, who's that one it's not there anymore you've got to rely on some website or other to try and find a thing you saw a week ago uh, <laughs> it is it is difficult to keep up yes it's actually one of the reasons i also went historicals aren't changing anytime soon <laughs> so <laughs> it was much easier to work that out. Excuse me, as I'm looking at this. This is the joys of Napoleonic's people. Oh no! Oh, yeah. what what regiment are you doing? Oh, is this a skirmish company or is this the Fusiliers? Or yeah, anyway. <laughs> I started off with historics. 
if it's called research ed I apologize for everyone that doesn't know jp does have uh, a degree in history and he's currently doing his masters so if anyone is the master of research it is jp just saying like it's not that hard to read a book is it ed well <laughs> so that book you sent me arrived and i went oh liz there's no pictures in it as in a i was expecting some diagrams and she just went edward you're a 35 year old grown man okay if you can't read a book without pictures you've got some bloody issues <laughs> i wanted a picture but <laughs> And I just looked at her and went, I can't argue with that. That's, yep, spot on. Mm. All right, that's, the, of, uh, that's the one hour of picking on it. Right, back yeah. to you, Peter. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, a, a couple, of, couple of comments here. Um, uh, uh, Cam Davidson says he's forgotten how good it is to hobby with people. And it's nice and relaxing to sit here and listen. And it's good motivation to do some hobby. So You're, you're very here, welcome, mate. Cam. Welcome and thanks for, th thanks for coming in. Um, Mark Newman says to you, Ed, poor Ed, having to deal with reality. <laughs> uh, uh, um, <laughs> West, Western Tabletop yeah, well is on. Well played. And the, and the real Disco Boy, um, it says he'll be back a little bit later on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for grabbing Thanks, the first CJ. part of the stream. Um, Foggy says, building painting miniatures really helps me decompress and release stress. Although when I have a ton in the backlog, I give myself some major anxiety about getting it all done and even start painting. It can, it can be a big problem. For, for you, Peter, you know, from a, from a rules uh, uh, point of view or from a game development perspective, do you feel that pressure to have to, you know, uh, you know constantly work on something? Or if you're not working on it, does that stress you out? Or It, 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 is, a, it, it is a pull you get. Um... I, like you, you, you want to be working on on, on your your rules because you need to get that done. Uh, but you also want to paint miniatures because that's fun. Uh, and sometimes you feel a bit bad about painting miniatures when you've got rules you could be writing. <coughs> um, what I tend to do is go, okay, I need to do rules effectively. I need a good slab of time. You can't just do it in an hour. You can do a bit of work in an hour, but not enough to make it worthwhile. Um, so I kind of go, if it's a little bit of time I've got spare, I'll paint, or I'll, I'll be your old the game whatever uh if i've got an afternoon and i'm not doing anything else i'll write some rules um and that tends to work pretty well for me i tend to do them on a saturday because well what you busy on saturdays most saturdays at the market so i've got all saturday morning free and is that is that something that, that, that you enjoy doing? It's, this is kind of a weird question, I suppose, yeah. because, you know, I've been working on some rules for a long time now, and I don't know if anything will ever happen with them. But, um, you know, for me, you know, it's not so much about the rules. Yes, I want the mechanics and the core of the game to work really well, and obviously, you know, it's supporting mechanics to, you know, be clean and efficient. But because it's a fantasy story, I get to really enjoy, you know, that creative world-building experience. Yeah. I, got um, that, I got that more with... with I'm still doing that more with Twister than I did with do with the World War Two one because World War Two you don't get much much of story you just got to write the rules and, and it is what it is you know yeah with Twister you get to build story the story isn't there so you don't you know, um, and that's the fun bit the writing the stories for Twister was, was excellent fun and it still is um, we're just working on some new stuff for Twister at the moment that will drive the story on a bit more which is fun. sorry Peter I hate I hate to jump in but I've started getting personal messages now. Uh, not just not just through the stream, but you know via Facebook as well, saying Peter's audio is way too quiet, and I can't turn it up here at my end anymore. Okay, it... let me see if I can get this in. Uh, is there a setting to turn up audio? That's the question. Mm, that is the question. Yeah. It should be a microphone setting on your computer you can boost. Yeah, let's have a little quick look. I mean, we, 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 this will be a problem that we'll face throughout the stream, I, I assume, given that we are in Australia and our, our national broadband network is uh, currently operated by mice uh, running around uh, <laughs> in, the, in their wheel. Um, uh, I think you picked the wrong rodent, uh, Vivian. I think it's rats. Let's try that. I've just, I've, just, um, I've just maxed out the microphone volume at this end, so we'll see if that actually works. Yeah, so we'll, uh, that's, it sounds better here in my headphones, so let us know in the yep. chat if uh, you can hear Peter properly now. Um, yeah. yeah, so it, it, kind of what I was, uh, you know, getting at there is, is that the, the, the world building is the is the is, a, is the probably the more fun bit than the rules. The rules are fun. Yeah. Um, at least until somebody finds an enormous cock up in them, they're not much fun at all. But so um, so so you know, is 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 that concentration just in the rules development uh, before Thousand Yard Stare? Mm. Uh, is 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 that 
I don't know, again, this is a weird question. Is that an enjoyable process? Does it? Do you feel pressure from it, or because you no, don't really. you don't get the creative outlet that you've had when you develop no, you, Twisted? It's, it's it's not really it's not really pressure. It's kind of it's more a, a concern that you, you you've done something horrible, um, right? That, that isn't going to work. Like, and it, it, it's it, it's almost like a um. Because you still got, I've still got to test them. It's kind of like, well, who cares if it's wrong at this point? It doesn't actually matter um, because I'm going to fix it. But it's still, you still want to be right. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's, it's a kind of a. I guess anything else, it's a, it's a fear of getting it wrong as much as anything with rules. Like the, it's, it, there, there are a few blues in Twisted, and uh, quite a, you know, the few things I'll probably fix if I had to go back and do it again. Um, and it's always a bit disturbing for someone to find a mistake in something you've done. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, but, but. Uh, from I, I heard from some very wise people um, who used to work for Games Workshop. Actually, when I was we were talking to again some consult with us on Twisted about you know, how things go, um, they basically said that it's almost impossible that, to to produce a game with no mistakes in the rules. It's, it's just not something you can even aim for. Yeah, so, I, I, I was going to say that you know it must be you know and that no game is ever released perfect, and I don't think any game is ever perfect after several different sorts of releases. Yeah, that, there's always something that's wrong and, and requires a tinker or a tweak or a little twist. I mean, there's one thing in, in Twist that I've actually just officially changed, which was victory points for low cost models like yeah. the Urken, for instance. Um, originally, they were just any other model, so you kill them and you get VP as of any other model. Uh, and, and the Urken, because they, they... And they come back, Pete. That's the problem. So they, they, <laughs> they, they are complete nut of point sinks, you know. Um, but, so, the recent change we made was to make them worth a single VP, essentially, instead of three. Um, so they, they come back three times and get killed three times before they're the same as any other model. Um, so it makes them a lot more effective as a force. And it's one of those things that you don't even... I didn't... I never encountered it when I played number of times I play tested it. Uh, players found it fairly swiftly and went, oh, that's a problem. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and, and fixing it seems to have done the job. And most people seem to be quite amenable to the fact that, yeah, it was wrong, but you fixed it. So, well, hey. <laughs> um, yeah, I, feel, I think I, that's the, really the only thing you can do is just, you know, address the issues when they pop up and, you know, and just keep, yeah. and, and, and keep carrying on. Yeah, the, the thing that heartened me was, was their FAQ is a page and a half, I think, for Twisted. Uh, FAQ and Arata. Uh, mm. The one for the latest 40k release is about 30 pages or something. You're crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, they've got a lot more stuff than we do. <laughs> that's because every time they release a codex, it breaks the game again. So, <laughs> uh, And, you know, people, but, people are nitpicking that game to pieces because, you know, it's obviously a very, you know, hyper-competitive environment for a lot of people. That, yeah, and the know, more eyes on you, it as you well. End up with that. You know? Yeah, of course, and the more eyes. But, yeah. you know, the more, you know, scrutiny that your rules get because, you know, it has that competitive crowd or you know people you know can't agree to say you know let's just do this because we think it's going to be cool um mm. you end up with these massive um faqs yeah yeah but an, an faq is inevitable like there's always something that that you wrote that seems perfectly clear to you um uh, but anyone else reads it doesn't get it at all or completely misunderstands it or you know to some degree bends it the way they want it to be you know um and there's always things you could. There's one that came out the other day where it was there's an ability in Twisted called Stand and Deliver, which is, allows you to basically fire at somebody as they come in to attack you mm. in, in combat. So you can, you know, as they come charging and you shoot at them and they engage you. Um, and a lot of players have been playing it <clears throat> as it happened every single time. Is that it, you know, as soon as if some, anyone engages you, you get that shot at you. Um, I pointed out the other day that actually you only get to do it once as long as you. Once you're engaged in close combat, you can't shoot anymore. I know the rules say that. But they don't specifically say it under that ability. So it's kind of that relation back in. I could have made it clearer at the time. That yeah, right. That once the first person attacks you, if they're still fighting and someone else comes in, you don't get to shoot at them as well. Yeah. Um, you're, already, you're already grappling old mate who's in your face exactly. trying to yeah. fight your head off. Exactly. Hold, hold, hold on, hold on, Steve. I just need to take a shot at Frank and then we'll get right back to you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you guys haven't seen John Wick? <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is steampunk, okay? Not steampunk. John Wick would be really interesting. I have we, to we, well, we did a steampunk Vinny Jones, which is similar. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just I, on the rules though. I just think you know if if the best sort of well, the best you know legal minds, parliamentary drafters can't get 
legislation done correctly <laughs> first time with the billions of dollars of, yeah. of you know assets they have. I think it's a bit harsh to think that um, yeah. small Joe, independent Joe rules makers are going to be able to work out the weird ways that people can use the English language <laughs> yeah, to interpret precisely. things. Yeah, um, yeah. The, Especially the willful... considering what we found out they get paid, Toph, as well. They're not getting yeah. paid mega bucks here, you know? No. The interesting thing is we had um, I had help from uh, Jake Thornton when I was working on, on Twisted. Um, he's been, I've talked to him quite a bit. He used to eat a white dwarf, I remember him. Um, yeah, back. Oh, yeah, yeah. I just realised uh, people might not know that now. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um, <laughs> great, lovely, lovely, lovely gentleman. Lovely chap. Um, and because he wrote a lot of a lot of stuff for Games Workshop in the day and a lot of rules work for them, um, he was telling me that on occasion when you'd be working on a rule book, you'd be writing a rule that you, you meant to work in, in way A, but you actually wrote it completely to work in way B. He said that the number of times he did that he wrote the opposite of what he meant, and it got through to like the last stages of the book. <laughs> Everyone noticed. Oh, um, it's remarkable, and, so, uh, and it's just the whole process is is, is very. And I, I tend to write in a, this weird kind of um, almost jumpy way. I guess you thought you like I'll, I'll, be, I'll be writing a section. I was doing a section in the rule book um, the other night on interacting with things, opening doors, and. You know, uh, tinkering this stuff in, in the game. So if you want to, you character to run up and try and start a car, the rules for that sort of thing. Yeah. And then triggered me to think about buildings. So I then jumped back about half a section of the rule book. Went, okay, write the rules about buildings now. And I'll do that a lot where I'm writing a rule and I'll get halfway through a rule. It suddenly triggers me to think about something else about another rule that I'm going to go back and change. Um, so this weird kind of, um, I guess, an organic kind of process that I go through. It's not that structured the way I write, uh, which is weird. So, yeah, I was, gonna, be... <laughs> I, was, I was just about to say it sounds like a very organic process. Um, yeah, it, it, there's kind of the way I kind of I approach this book um, is that I wrote the index first. So this is, on the cover. this is the stuff which we need to have in there. I was you know, shooting, fighting. Um, so you use the base structure of the book, but inevitably you'll you'll, you'll write something and. And sometimes it, that, that reveals a problem with another rule. You suddenly realise, oh, hang on, I, mean, I can't do that like I did before because this needs to do this. You know, and then you have to change both of them so they mesh better and that sort of stuff. Yeah, that's that's so, one of the challenges that I've found in the, in, the, in the rules that I've been messing around with for a few years is, you know, yeah. because I jump around so much and probably because I've, you know, come back to it every three months, I'll look yeah. at a rule and go, oh, yeah, I need to fix this in this section and oh, I need to fix mm. this in this section. And then I'll mm. come back around to where I started. I was like, oh, now I've completely broken this. <laughs> and you know, and then I, you know, I'm just hopping back and forth, back and forth. It doesn't really feel like I'm getting anywhere. No, but, exactly. Uh, yeah, you do. Eventually, you'll get there. It, there. There is a usually a breaking point with them where you suddenly go, "Oh, that's done there." Yeah, yeah. Um, well, you know, I guess yeah. it's relevant. Western Tabletop here in the chat says um, he was responding to Foggy. We were talking before about staying motivated and um, you know feeling anxiety from big piles of paint and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's relevant to hear from a, from a rules perspective, at least for me. Um, yeah. he, he was saying to Foggy, best advice is to do something uh, basic but often. Spend an hour a night just on something simple. Get some boots done for some troops, then work on the paint pants uh, the next day, etc. No need to cram it all in. And I think yeah, that is that is JP's big message as well. Half an hour a night. Minimum. Just, just do a, there, a little bit a little at a time. Bit. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, I think from a rules perspective, at least for me, I think if I sit down and look at my rules at least once a night or, you know, once every couple of nights and just, you know, read through bits and pieces to keep it fresh in my mind, it might not feel so daunting to me that, you know, yeah. um, I might be a little bit more enthusiastic and, and positive about, you know, this game will actually be released. Um, <laughs> is, 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 is that something that you do? You know, how often do you spend looking at your rules and, and working on them? Um, I will tend to go... A little bit more um, on and off. I will. I will go mad. I start a section. Once I get into the section, I'll keep going um, until it's done. Um, and I might find that I'll stop for a week and not do it again for a week. Go back at it again. Um, it, it really depends on on what else is going on because like, I've got a lot of other things you got to fit around it, you know. So. Um, yeah, so I like to try and spend at least an hour or two a week on them. But it's 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 most of the time I like to try and find big slabs of time, which are a little bit rarer. Um, so I actually focus on it for a while. Mm. Um, yeah, you know, I like to give it a quick skim over before I start doing anything else. So I just quickly check what I've done before, and and and, and I can remember what you've done before as well. Um, I often often say when I'm, I'm playing twisted with people, um, 
the don't rely on me to remember the rules because I probably don't. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. We'll, 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 we'll have um, Ara from Mana Press on later on. I've, I've played a lot of Tribal and. Yeah. Um, uh, you, you 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 did the book layout for for yeah. um for their for their books for their games, yeah. and uh, every time I play tribal with uh, Ara, he, he'll get, always get something wrong, and yeah. um he, he'll be asking me what am I supposed to do here? It's like Ara, this is your game, man. You, yeah. You know. the, the, the problem the problem I find with, with 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 that is you remember all the rules, so often you remember the rule you wrote the first time because that was the one you really really liked, uh, which you then changed because it didn't work. Yeah. Um, so. You're remembering rules that were included in version A of the rulebook rather than version Z, which is actually published. Um, and and to some degree, you're so close to them you actually can't see them anymore. Yeah. Um, well, I, you know, I was I was gonna I was gonna say that you know one, one of the comments here just you know it brought up in my mind you know mm. you'd mentioned to me uh, when I, we were chatting a couple of weeks ago mm. that you write directly to layout. Exactly. Um, yeah. And, you yeah. know, I, I write a manuscript and I'm constantly bouncing back and forward between between it. Yeah. Yeah. How do you manage that issue of version control? Do you have different versions of the documents? Because no, you, no, you don't. Just no. Just one document. It's all laid out, finished, to, to a degree. So what happens if you um, write something and then you change it later on and then you want to come back and you go, actually, no, that idea was better? Um, well, you either rewrite it or you, if you're not sure, keep the bit of text floating off the side of the page. I've yeah, done right. that before. So you just copy and paste a bit of text there you go, okay, I'm going to change this and see if it works better. Yeah. Usually I'm, I'm pretty confident that what I'm changing is going to be better than what I wrote. Yeah. Uh, the only reason I write to layout is because uh, I'm honestly faster at working in InDesign than I am in Word. Right. Because um, I've worked in InDesign for my entire career, you know, so I can I can, I can can lay stuff out in InDesign faster than I can format rubbishy documents in Word. So Yeah. And, and, and I understand it better too. Like to me, it makes more sense if I can see it. Well, with you know, work, working yeah. with the tools you have makes you more yeah. effective than trying to figure out how to use something else that, you, you know, you, yeah, yeah. it doesn't work yeah, well I, with the job. If I, if, if, for instance, so in some of the sections on the rulebook, you, know, you talk about the template weapons and, and relations of characters in close combat. So I quickly make a little graphic up that shows it in design um, and, and, and understand what I'm talking about rather than trying to guess it in Word and write stuff down, have little notes to the side about things and, yeah. you know. Um, some of the more complex stuff, you know, things like you know, how flamethrowers work and you know, the relations of those to buildings and things like that. You sort of go, well, you know, you need to see that in your head and then get it on the paper in front of you so you can actually make sense of it. Yeah. Um, uh, and it's just more fun. It looks better. The more, you, the more you get it finished when you're working on it, the more you go, oh, I'm getting somewhere with this now. Yeah. So, yeah. I guess, well, I guess you can see it coming alive in front of you rather than yeah. just working on a big manuscript and and then, you know, you, you've got ahead of me. Now I've got to do layout. And when I do layout, I'm going to have to cut back some of this text and or, you know, yeah. you, you, you get a much clearer a representation of what your final product's going to be like whilst you're in the process of making that. Exactly. Yeah. The, the, I guess the, the downside is you're probably focusing on the layout, you know, a little more than you probably should. Like you sort of go, oh, I need to add a page in there for rules. Oh, I can't put it there because then that'll throw that nice little graphic I've got down there off. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I'll, I'll try and work around if I can. I'll see if I can work it somewhere else. Yeah. But it also gives you a good sense of the structure of the document too. Um, one thing a lot of people who who have read the Twisted Rulebook have said is that, that it's a very easy book to navigate. Yeah. And that's possibly because it was laid out as it was written, so it it, it flows very naturally for as a, as a document. Um, it makes a lot of sense that way. Yeah, um, it's, it's certainly no, an interesting no. way to do it, you know. And, and you know, when we were chatting, um, you know, I was surprised that uh, you know you write directly to layout, but you know, I can certainly see the advantages in, in being able to do so. Not only because you're quicker with the with the InDesign than you are um, uh, uh, you're outside of it, but because it yeah. gives you that representation of what you're uh, working on and allows you to look through it to yeah. find that flow. Yeah, and it, it, it sort of it clarifies it for you, to, to, for, to me at least. It, I, I, I can lay it out so it actually makes. Um, so the structure of a rule book essentially is, is you got a you know a section heading, you know, which might be you know uh, in this I'm looking at page here from the book. So the supply pool we're talking about equipment. So you got a main heading of that. Then you've got sub headings and what can how can you access the supply pool, supply pool and nationality, and then you sort of um, you start to subhead it down. You can sort of make the book make more sense and the rules follow naturally as as whether they're sort of sub rules or rules right that like you almost have a, a section of rules then you have the rules within that section 
then you have the sub rules of those rules if you get my drift. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, for instance, I've, I've mentioned in this section there's a, there's a nationality of the supply pool, so the, the British guys can only draw weapons from the British pool, etc., etc. But ammunition is listed as ammunition. Yeah. So, um, it doesn't respect nationality. So that's a sub rule of the main rule. Kind of not making much sense here, but you know, going to get my drift is that. No, it, it, it makes the sense. rules in a way. Yeah, it kind of structures the rules in a way to, in your head at the point when you when you're writing it, going, okay, well, I need to. This is a rule of this rule, and that point is there. Um, there are some problems laying it out, like I said, but it's uh, to me it makes more sense. Yeah, um, I can see it better. So. Yeah. Oh, we got a couple of comments here in the in the chat. Um, people obviously saying, you know, I must keep it a, a, a better, a closer eye on the chat, otherwise it runs away from me. People are saying the sound is good with Peter. That was twenty minutes ago. That's good too. That's, that's, that, that, that's good too. Great, great news, uh, Viv. I'm glad we've clarified that. <laughs> Luke, Luke Appleby says awesome conversation about game design, guys. And I think I think this is one of the things that um, you know I really enjoy um, when I manage to catch live streams is mm. you know hearing you know game designers talk about their experiences because you know everybody is different and everyone has a different workflow everyone has a different creative experience yeah, absolutely. Yeah. um so th so thanks peter for coming on the, on the stream if you've just joined us peter overton from demented games is here uh having a chat with us about uh his um you know, project that he's currently working on um thousand yard stairs is the project title the working name but um also one of the developers of the uh, fantastic steampunk um game twisted yeah um there's something um, something lovely about producing miniatures too. As far as um, that was my favourite bit about Twisted to a degree. Yeah. Is, is is getting you know we all love miniatures obviously because we're all sitting here painting them. Um, but th there's something amazing about getting a miniature that you design um, in front of you. You went, oh look at that, you know, I, I made that. That's one of my models. And and some of them when when you hit exactly the point of the model that you that you would buy in a heartbeat had you seen it. Um, uh, it's a, it's quite remarkable um, to produce that sort of stuff. And how people enjoy it as well is fun. Yeah. Uh, I just want to, I just want to let Nick know, Nick, I muted your mic because it sounds like someone's vacuuming in the background. Um, so you're currently and muted. He's still muted. You can unmute yourself. I can mute you, but I can't unmute you. So the best, the, really. there's no reverse right, for that. Is it still that uh, still a sound there? No, no. No. Got okay. That. I don't no, know. No, there's there's nobody vacuuming, so no, I don't know what that was. All right. Well, you we should probably ask what's going on then. It's in the background. It's probably, we can hear probably, something that sucks. Probably just me. Yeah. Well, you know, I didn't want to ask. I was like, no, nah, I'm just going to bring down that mute hammer. And um, <laughs> uh, um, sorry, Peter, just to to, to interrupt yeah. you there. That's all right. Um. How was I? I mean, miniatures, weren't we? Yeah, um, you were talking about how yeah. you know the the the, the, pro yeah. the process of creating I mean, the miniatures was. You know... I, yeah, I, I mentioned you know Indigo Ford just before um, the, the the miniature from our range of um, not Indiana Jones, obviously. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it was it was a model that I I really liked the idea of is it, doing a female Indiana Jones, um, and and we got the Owen. Uh, Aurelio, one of our concert artists, did the artwork for it. It was during the in the middle of the Kickstarter when she was done, so we were really busy at the time as well. It's one of those models that just went really nicely. Everything just fell into place. The concept was perfect. Um, that, that kicked off the Egyptians so well, Pete. And like it, it was just yeah. and it was yeah, a, such a nice character. Character and and managed to, managed to get uh, Patrick Masson to sculpt it for us, who is well, I consider him one of the finest miniature sculptors in the world. You know. Um, you know, he, his his work is just incredible. Um, and and she is to this day one of my favourite miniatures ever. Um, um, there's a few others that are that are up there with her, um, not just of our range, but there's a few others that I really love. Uh, but she's up there um, in terms of pose, and you know, I've got about seven copies of her sitting in my cabinet just in case I ever want to paint another one. Um, nice, yeah, but. Yeah, it's one of those things I enjoy about collecting. Well, probably yeah, kind of more strictly collecting miniatures than painting them, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's. Do we have a Do we have a segment on backlogs at all, Viv? Because <laughs> well, you know that's uh, that's why we're doing this. You know, just to chunk, yeah. chunk through a little bit. Yeah, there's a hundred yeah. and something models from Perry Miniatures here to to bolster the French that have added to the pile of shame. So I say again, amateur. 
<laughs> yeah, fair call, Pete. I, I got I got asked by the wife to justify, so a big chunk got the boot very quickly. Yeah, no, I, um, I've got hundreds, thousands, probably sitting in the cupboard. But... Yeah, I've, I topped out at seven hundred and thirty at the start of the year, and we've we've brought that back down to six hundred and something. So. Here's, here's, an, here's an interesting comment, Pete. This is relevant for you as well. This, you know, relates back to um, yeah. uh, the issue that Foggy was talking about with painting backlogs and all that sort of stuff. Mm. Titan Wargaming says, a lot of Twitter users, including myself, do what they call a hobby streak. Doing something small every day and posting progress, um, mm. if we can, to help keep us motivated. My current streak is up to 143 days. Is that something that's, that's challenging for you from a game development perspective? Is that whilst you're yeah. working on the game, you're obviously right in the throes of it and it's super exciting. Mm. Um, I'm one of those people who just, you know, uh, I can't stop myself from talking. And if I, yeah. if, if I do something cool, I'm like, I oh, fucking take a picture of that and put it on the yeah. interwebs. Um, and, you know, I'm notoriously bad at um, never completing anything, you know, hence the reason yeah. why, you know, <laughs> I, I, I've got 80% of, of miniatures, uh, you know. So I'll put up pictures of stuff that I'm excited about that I'm working yeah. on. And then, you know, something will happen and, you know, my ADHD will kick drive, you know, go into overdrive and I'll be doing something else and I'll never get back around to that project. But then mm. it, it comes back to me later on and I'm like, oh man, you know, I posted about that. From a game development p p perspective, yep. do, are, are you ever tempted to, you know, post stuff and go, oh, this is great, but you know that you can't or, you know. Yeah, I'm in that, I'm in that position with the, with the new project now is that I'd really like to get people excited about it, but I kind of can't. Because it's not far enough along to do that just yet. Yeah. Um, it's. I'd love to get a you know, little Facebook page going and some discussion happening, that sort of stuff. I've mentioned it a couple of times in World War Two forums here and there, but not a lot. Is, uh, is there a point when you think you'll get? You can. You when is it? Is there oh, a I point when I'll, you get to that point where you can go? Okay, yeah, now I can I'll, start publicly doing things. I think at the point you start to play test it. Yeah. Is really going to be the point where you've got everything. Where you've got everything written, and you're starting to make sure it actually works. Right. At that point, you can probably you can quite comfortably say this is happening. Because it's, you know, I would, my, my original aim was to write this, this game's been probably a couple of years in, in development now. I started, I started just around the start of 2020. Um, uh, maybe, it might have been just before Christmas 2019, I think. So, um, it's been a couple of years, but there's been some, you know, interesting times between <laughs> then and now, obviously. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it took me, f it took about four years to write Twisted. Right, wow. Uh, um, from where we started to when we finished it. There was a bunch of stuff that happened between the start and the finish of that. Um, it's it's quite an involved process, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you know, there's that four years in, is from when we first met in Sydney and decided we were going to have a crack at it yeah. um, to when it actually arrived on people's doorsteps. So um, probably the first 12 months was trying to figure out actually what we wanted to do. Yeah. Uh, uh, it went through a bunch of different variations to begin with of being a board, a board game that started out as um, it's got like space, space Hulk sort of thing uh, crawler. yeah the original concept was that um, we tried our hardest to get that to work but we just couldn't um, in terms of costs and general production problems you know um, uh, we then had a, a bit of a fraught phase where we really didn't know where we were going with it uh, for a few months. <laughs> uh, well, it's, and, uh, it's been a bit like that for me with my game. It's changed so many times. I didn't really have a clear vision from the beginning. Yeah. Um, yeah kind of once we, once we nailed in what we were doing, it was probably 18 months of fairly solid writing uh, yeah. to get it written. Uh, once that, that's a copy of the book. That is 130 odd pages of rules. Wow. Um, yeah, plus, it's, a, it's a dense, it's a dense book but it's good yeah. no plus the other book so there's there's the egyptian book which is another what's that another 60. so there's probably it's probably three or four hundred pages of stuff written and twisted amazing Pe uh, peter overton here uh, if you just tuned in from twisted he's very very kindly uh, donated to our prize giveaway pool which which we are still in the process of trying to figure out how we're going to give away all these prizes um it sort of got really, it's, really professional so it kind of got job a, so far <laughs> it kind of got away from me he's very kindly donated a um the twisted um a rule box set that comes with all the rules and all the bits and pieces that you need to play the game as well as i don't know why i'm looking at this camera up here there's no camera up there it's normally up there the camera is over here um 
uh, as well as two uh, starter sets of uh, the, the the different sorts of factions in the game. Um, so thank you, Peter, for for for, no, no for, for giving th those to us. I want to quickly jump into the chat here and just catch myself up again because there's a couple more comments here. Um, Jail Edwards says hi everyone. Thanks for tuning in, Jail. Mark Newman. Um, I'm not sure how many of you guys know Mark. Ed, I think you know Mark. Um, he says you got to watch out for Ara. Um, that guy is uh, always mm. making rules mm. that favour himself. Mm. <laughs> uh, um, it's true. He's dangerous, but that's okay. Uh, Damsky says, good work, lads. Good to see Ed doing something useful. Oh, thanks, Damsky. You big bastard. Um, <laughs> this is this is more of my friends giving me shit, so this is good to see that they're here to support me. Uh, I'm getting a message here saying my internet is running slow, which is super weird. YouTube is not receiving enough video to main, uh, maintain smooth streaming, which is weird. I don't know why that would be the case. Uh, you, did, you, did, you did mine to hit. Mine hits like a freaking rocket. Now we'll Thank see. You. I'll go harass my family in just a second. Um, Lee says hello. Cam, uh, Cam Davidson says, is there an Instagram, Twitter hashtag we should be uh, using to post our work to? Um, you know, I don't think we were that prepared and, 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 and set anything up to do any of that. Do it on, uh, why don't we just do it on Instagram? Uh, hashtag painting for life. Simple. Uh, all right. Yeah. Hashtag painting for life. And I'll see if I can jump into Instagram and, and set something up here in the stream and we can jump into some of those comments later on. If you are painting on a home. Great. There we go. Thanks, Ed. I'm not a huge Instagram user, but um, hashtag painting for life and we'll see what we can grab out of there. Um, the real disco boy saying thanks, Peter, for your answer to his question, which was a little bit further up. It's gone from the stream and I'm not going to be able to find it. So. Um, we'll, 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 we'll move on. Christian Halverson says, good morning, guys. Well done. Just joined. So about to listen and paint. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for painting. Um, and, uh, World Tweet has, 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 has commented that hashtag painting for life. Thanks so much. And a little bit of correspondence back and forward between Foggy and Titan Wargaming about their ideas for keeping motivated and getting things done. Um, <laughs> so are you, are, what's, what's your plan for the rest of the day, Peter? Are you going to be painting some miniatures? Um, well, I have to go and buy a beer for grand final day. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but quite apart from that, no, yeah, we'll probably paint some minis later. Probably nick off in the shortly and, and come back for me, come back to stream later on and, and paint some stuff. Where, where can people find out more information about Twisted and uh, Demented Games? Uh, and... Twisted on Facebook, largely. So search out Demented Games or Twisted, you'll turn it up. There's a Twisted Facebook group called Twisted Minions of the Engine, which is our sort of fan group. Twisted Minions uh, of the Engine. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Um, so that stuff there. The other the other project isn't anywhere available yet. Um, if you find me on Facebook personally, I can talk to you about it if you want to. You know. Well, um, I, I'm I'm really looking forward to that. I've got so many World War Two figures um, that yeah. uh, in the past I've used for bolt action, and uh, yeah. you know I'd love to put some character figures in there gonna, and you know play some narrative sit, games. Sit, sit down uh, a bit later on this afternoon, maybe try and remember what colours I used in my German green. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's um it's green and then a um a wash. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I actually, actually got a really good. I, I painted three of them the other day. I, I bought the German grey from uh, Val Vallejo to do them with, and it's too grey. I mean, oh, that's awful. No. So, so I mixed some other Games Workshop colours with them and came up with a really good colour, but I can't remember what I did there. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. So, my little notebook failed me. It's, um, my, my British had a notebook, and they're all written out. So. I'm, t I'm, super, I'm, I'm terrible with keeping notes uh, on, 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 on how I do things. And I'd mentioned to um, other people before and Ed to use uh, to use an app called Paint Rack. Paint Rack, but, so uh, good. You know, I, I have the app and I never use it. Uh, no, I was going to say, the, the issue is the effort to actually put things in there. Yeah, so um, I play with my little notebook. It sits next to me on my painting desk where I'm painting force. I'll just scribble things in it. Like, you know, this one uses, you know, Graveyard Earth plus a bit of that and a bit of this and, you know. Uh, wash of this other color and off you go you know? yeah so, it's, it's actually kind of funny so most of my paints are g-dub paints um i've got a few layers a few bits and pieces but trying to do well by two stuff with g-dub paints is a bit of a, hmm. a it's an interesting one they're not yeah. they're not quite the the right vibrancy they're a bit too vibrant a lot of the time yeah they're a bit too bright um, um i managed to get the british done pretty well um so i i did sadly choose the royal warwick's regiment to do them as which meant i had to do some little tiny black triangles with little black little red triangles inside them which was fun on the shoulders <laughs> which, 
Bench triangles less than a millimetre across. You're kind of struggling with that tiny one. Well, that's, that's, that's where my effort stops and says, I'll do one of the triangles and you can just imagine the other colours there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, look, I won't say they're all triangles. Some of the red ones are kind of more of a dot. But, you know, uh, the colours there, that's the important. The colours there. It's the representative. Colours. It's representative. Yeah. It's, one of the things I quite enjoyed was coming up with regiment to make. Oh, which regiment should I make this? I'll chose one from near where I was born, Warwick, in Birmingham. So, Royal Warwickshire Regiment, so the, the one. Um, not a particularly big regiment or a particularly famous one, but I like them. Yeah. Um, MJ uh, in Oz in the chat here says, really interesting chat with Peter. Looking forward oh, to a thousand yard stare. Well, yeah, yeah, hopefully, like, hopefully later on this year, hopefully I'll have something available. I have to come annoy oh. you for more buildings, Viv. Anytime. Yeah, well, Got a warehouse full <laughs> of them. <laughs> the letters, letters from home range. Be good for continental Europe. Yeah. Are you are you are you concentrating on the European theatre, Peter, or are you going to be doing the Pacific oh, theatre as well? That's a great um, question. It's um, the initial thought was to just to be European, uh, but I did get uh, Nick was kind enough to send me a whole pile of Japanese and Australians the other day. Went, oh, there'd be some pretty cool. I'm just imagining right now some really cool scenarios on little islets, islands, and you know inlets yeah. and stuff. And yeah, yeah, yeah. and um. So I, I, I'm toying with the idea of putting the Japanese theatre or the Pacific theatre into the book, or maybe making an add-on book. I don't know whether it's whether it's worth an add-on book just to add in two forces is kind of is, is my concern. You know, you think, well, what are you adding to the game by by, by putting them in a separate book? Is that you're not really adding any narrative because there's no narrative to add. Mm. Um, uh, you're adding just a force book essentially, and you might as well put it in the main book, and that, that's the case. You know, um, they'll do what they want. Partisans will be fun. I'm looking for partisan rules will be interesting. That'd be really cool. Yeah, I think they'll be the fun ones. Most of the forces obviously have their access to their equipment for a certain price. Yeah, um, yeah. So, so yeah, the, the, my idea with currently with partisans is that is that normal the normal forces you have access to your various. Equipment, uh, equipment pools. So your Germans have access to German gear, blah, blah, blah. And they've got access to skills that they can buy through it when they're setting up the squad. Uh, the partisans will probably have access to everybody's equipment pool, but at a slightly higher price and have access to cheaper skills. So in general, your partisans will be less well equipped because they can't afford the really good stuff, um, but they'll be more skilled than most soldiers are, which kind of makes sense in some ways. Um, they're certainly, more flexible in how they approach things. Yeah, certainly more of a narrative sense is they're 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 you know they're more determined fighters and they're probably a little bit better at fighting than the average you know, run of the mill trooper. Um, really interesting little way to take it. Also, also trying to figure out a way to do the home guard. Too. I'd love to do home guard. Um, quite how you do that is another question because they'd have to be slightly downgraded profiles in my mind, like slightly more rubbish soldiers. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, they're lovely. That, they, we we spent a lot of time designing and developing those. Um, and Thanks, Frederick. Thank you very much. Exactly. That's the thing. That's that's what I was thinking with when I when I was writing it. One of the reasons I, I considered it is that, is that people there are a lot of people out there who have all this stuff already. You know, it's no stretch for somebody to pick up this set of rules and go, "Oh, we'll give it a crack." Why not? You know, um, how it's released in the end, I'm not sure yet. Whether you produce a hard hard copy book, whether it's just electronic, I don't know. At this point, um, that's a decision for later on in the you know the the thing. I imagine it will be electronic to begin with um, because that's essentially free to release it. Uh, um, printing books is obviously a, a commitment. Um, They're so nice. <laughs> I know. Well, yeah, I mean, what, uh, having worked in printing for as long as I have, um, I know that 
pitfalls you can end up with, with, the, with producing anything at the moment. But uh, and producing books is they're not cheap to do, especially in small quantities. And this honestly, this game is not going to be a big seller. I don't expect. Um, so I don't want to. I don't want to commit to a thousand copies of the book and they're sitting around for five years. You know, um, and then you have to you have to think about you know how you produce effectively smaller copies of the book without them being dear as poison. Super expensive. Um, yeah. Um, so there are ways. There are ways, but that'll be just a, a decision to make later on. We'll see how it goes. Um, what the reactions like to it. If people seem to want it, then we'll, we'll certainly pursue that. You know, that object. Looking after the fans is always important. Or well, for me and Sebastian. Um, so this, this 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 new project is actually sort of more of a, a project for me. It's not actually a demented games project as such. That's sort of a sub brand of something else I'm going to do. So, a, side, a side project just for your yeah. your personal interests. Thanks very exactly, much for the yeah. chat out there saying that uh, Viv's audio has gone. I had turned it down. Um, yeah. And I uh, totally forgot to so say, if you do have issues in the sound, put it out. I've caught up with the chat now, so thanks for letting me know my audio's gone. So much more of a, a personal project, a passion project. Yeah, it's kind of like Sebastian has his his, his veiled lamp range of busts. I don't know if you've seen them yet. Um, check them out. Mm. Veiled lamp, they're cool. They're brilliant. Veiled um, lamp? Veiled lamp, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, he's doing that on a different, completely different, separate thing to Twisted. I'm doing this as a separate thing to Twisted. Um, so we're just kind of keeping this kind of division in the in the in, in in what we do and it, it works pretty well that way twisting is its own thing with its own set of priorities and and, and stuff and and it allows us that, that that sort of creativity to do other stuff ourselves without actually having to affect the company as it were yeah 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 it's, uh, it's, it's you know you, you you know you still have your own you know motivations and inspirations as a as a hobbyist and you yeah. know being able to you know do those projects you know for yourself in your own time uh, exactly. you know is a nice yeah. thing rather than just having to constantly worry about you know we have to do this commercially or blah 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 and yeah yeah and there's still a lot to do for twisted monster we still have, we still write rules for that as well and there's still stuff we're working on sure uh, in terms of new models and rules but that's that's a side thing which also consumes time so there's all these little pressures you get on you about doing stuff for that stuff for this Bit of packaging art that needs doing it's always something that has to do has to be done that's the one thing you do find is is when your hobby becomes a job for one to better term yeah it does affect it slightly you just got to it takes you a while to get used to the idea yeah sure um sure. but it's that it's it's you know it's now something you have to manage a bit differently <laughs> yeah well you i have to cut so i can't compartment, compartmentalize the hobby bit from the the work bit yeah um, well that's that's a huge challenge for me obviously you know i run nights of dice full time it's mm. my job you know yeah. you know uh, my whole world here and it's you know i've turned my double car garage into you know my hobby heaven but you know i find mm. a massive massively difficult to draw separation between you know my hobby mm. in my business and whether yeah. when i'm at home and i'm doing things yeah. am i doing them because it's my hobby or am i trying to do something from a commercial perspective or um you yeah. know i i find that you know there's a big challenge for me but um yeah i'm not i probably haven't painted anything um uh, to a you know a competition sort of level now for four or five years so um you know, i used to be I used to like golden demons they were awesome fun uh, but i haven't done any of that sort of painting for a long time it's now sort of focused on just getting stuff painted because it's fun to paint it. Um, which is kind of like the World War II stuff. It also has been remarkable fun to make because it's so simple. There's no faffing about with freehand on it, that sort of stuff. You just kind of... He says before going into ridiculous autumn camo schemes on the Falsham Jaeger, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, I know, but it's it's kind of seemed like just a general run of the mill British grunt, you know, it's just easy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the figures are so good too. The artisan figures are brilliant. Um, it's such a nice character to them. Um, I'm looking forward, looking forward to getting to Nick's Japanese too. They're also really nice. Um, for some for some reason, Nick at Eureka Miniatures is convinced that I have a Japanese army. Um, really? Yes, because every time I speak to him, uh, or you know, before the lockdown when I went down and, and saw him, every time I'd pop in, he's like, "Oh, do you want some more Japanese?" And he'd bring out boxes of stuff. I don't I don't know if anyone in the chat's ever been down to Eureka Miniatures, but it's like a candy store when you go down there. You know, Nick, Nick or Jake or whoever's there, you know, will just bring out trays and you know drawers of miniatures for you to look through, and you just yeah. pick through like you know I'll have two of those, two of those, and and every time I go down there, he's like, "Oh, I've got some more Japanese for you, Viv." And I'm like, "I don't collect them, Nick." He's like, "I'm sure you do." And I'm like, "I don't." 
don't. He's like, well, maybe you should. Um, <laughs> <laughs> First try is free, Viv. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> it's free, yeah. Uh, it's, it's amazing. Peter, I'd love to keep talking, and you're very welcome to hang out on the stream with us. Um, yep. But, you know, I'm mindful of, of, of the the calendar and the schedule that yep, I put together. Sure. Um you know, and, uh, yeah, I've got some other things to nick off and do, but I'll, I'll be back later on. So. Uh, yeah, well, look, you know, if you if you want to do jump on the stream later on, you've got you've got the link. You know, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll let you in. Um, it's been fantastic Great. to talk to you. Some, it's been a really interesting insight for me from a from a development perspective and from a game design perspective. Um, you yeah. know, some of the issues that I face and. Um, Cool. You know, it's interesting to see you know how you go about your creative project. All of the links to Demented Games and your Facebook page are on the Knights of Dice page. Um, for some reason, my chat box, uh, my chat box, my chat bot is not working. It should have been yep. spamming out details about Demented Games and where they could find you. It's not working. I'll have to figure out why. Um, okay. So I'll, I'll just quickly, quickly skim through here. Um, uh, Foggy quickly asked, do you have any tabletop games you started developing in the beginning of your game development that you keep coming back to? Is there anything that you've started working on that's never come out and you're like, I want to do something about that, I want to do something about that? Uh, tw Twisted Solo Player. Solo Player for Twisted? Yeah. I've, I've got that sort of that third written and then kind of went, oh, that's going to be hard now. <laughs> that's kind of, kind of stopped. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hit, hit the shoal of, of difficulty and... And, uh, do, do you ever do you ever you know have a quick look at it every now and then and go no it's too you know yeah I've looked I've, I've reviewed it two or three times trying to figure out how to get past this issue um, it, it may well happen yet um, there's a few things I'd like to do. I'd like to do a proper fantasy game too like knights goblins or that sort of guff yeah I'm a big uh, I'm a big fantasy person yeah, um, I'm a, uh, yeah. MJ knows MJ and Oz says uh, the, uh, the Eureka Pacific World War II stuff is incredible. So please do something for the Pacific in Thousand Yard Step. I will do. Yeah. All right. Mine made up. There you go. We're in the <laughs> uh, and there we go. Eureka Miniatures is the best. Love my ape in boiler suits army. Um, oh, my God. I heard some gorgeous painting man. Brad is on shortly. And, uh, yes, um, let me uh, – I'll, I'll transition across to this. Brad um, – is uh, coming on from uh, Cast Ice soon. He's scheduled cool. at twelve thirty. Peter, thank you so much for joining uh, bye, bye. joining us. I really appreciate you I'll taking the time you. to pop on. Okay, thank you very much, Peter. Bye. Thanks, mate. Thanks, Thanks Pete. Good to see bye. you, mate. Thank you.